policeman was shot and injured during an attempted robbery at a phone and electronics store in Central Plaza, Halfway Tree, St. Andrew, on Wednesday afternoon. The store owner was also injured in the incident, but reportedly not from gunfire. The details of the incident are not yet clear, but head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth, said law enforcers are on the hunt for the would-be robbers. Only two days ago, another lawman was shot fatally by gunmen in St. Anne's Bay St. Anne. A day later, one of the suspects behind that incident was fatally shot by the police in Steertown, in the North Central Parish. The counterterrorism and organized crime arm of the police force has arrested a medical doctor who is believed to have been rendering services to members of the notorious Klansman gang, which operates mainly in section of Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Head of Crime and Security Portfolio at the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Deputy Commissioner Fitz Bailey, confirmed that Dr. Paul Alondo Robinson, 65, who operates in the Young Street area of Spanish Town, was arrested by the police. As the police continues its anti-gang effort, I wish to confirm that Dr. Paul Alondo Robinson, aged 65 years old, medical doctor who operates somewhere in the Young Street era of Spanish Town, was arrested by the police, CTOC to be specific, on reasonable suspicion of breach of the criminal justice Suppression of Criminal Organization Act. His arrest emanated from the ongoing investigation into the Tesha Miller led fraction of this clan's gang. Regarding provision of services made to the criminal underworld, he appeared on an ID parade today and was pointed out by two witnesses. He will be processed and the formal charges laid later on today or tomorrow. A taxi operator and the passengers who were in the vehicle have been hospitalized following a collision in the vicinity of Bayshore Park in Harborview, St. Andrew, on Wednesday. It is not known how many passengers were in the vehicle at the time of the collision. Eyewitnesses said the taxi and a red Isuzu van were heading in the same direction when the Isuzu ran into the back of the taxi, resulting in damage to both vehicles, but more significantly to the cab. A St. Anne man has been charged with murder in relation to the stabbing death of a woman on Market Street in the parish on Sunday, April 7. Charged is 40-year-old Theron Lug, otherwise called Ruddy, of Windsor Heights and Harbor Street addresses in the parish. The deceased has been identified as 48-year-old Tanika Mattis of Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, and St. Anne. Reports are that about 10.45 p.m., residents saw Mattis's body lying on the roadway and alerted the police. On their arrival, police saw the now-deceased with multiple stab wounds to the upper body. She was transported to the hospital, where death was confirmed. Investigations continued, and Lug was taken into custody on Tuesday, April 16, and was subsequently charged after a question and answer on Wednesday, April 17, while his court date is being arranged. A freak accident on Tuesday evening 
claimed the life of a motorcyclist and resulted in the injury of his common law partner after the biker was attacked by dogs, causing him to crash into an oncoming vehicle. The incident occurred along the Rock Hall to Mount Zion Main Road in St. Andrew. Dead is 29-year-old bearer Shane Gordon. It was reported that the injured woman is hospitalized and regained consciousness on Wednesday morning. Information reaching the local media is that Gordon, who resides at Parks Road, was on his way home when, on reaching a section of the roadway, the dogs reportedly rushed at his motorcycle. He reportedly attempted to swerve from the charging dogs and collided with the oncoming vehicle. Gordon reportedly died at the scene while his partner was assisted to a medical facility. A resident from the community said that the dogs are known to rush at people. Dance hall star Valiant has been in high spirits, landing major shows and topping several national awards since the start of his musical career just over a year ago. His next highly anticipated accomplishment will be his performance at the Wireless Festival, which is dubbed as Europe's biggest celebration of black music. The event is set for July 12 to July 14 in Finsbury Park, London. It will also feature a slew of other dance hall acts, such as Sean Paul, Vanessa Bling, Byron Messiah, and Skillabang. In addition to Valiant's strong representation for dance hall on a national level, he recently topped the music of Black Origins MOBO Awards for the Best Caribbean Music Act 2024. Merged with his accomplishment to be representing for another Black music celebration, he said that the combined achievements felt good. On that note of expected growth, when asked if the new flow and style of his latest single, Flava, was intentionally done, the artiste admitted the difference in his sound and revealed that he is now eyeing the international market for a more global impact. With just over a year in music and achieving such milestones, the singer advised aspiring youth in all fields to stay focused. You're thinking. You've got to decide. Let us help you choose. Listen to Career Talk and get the ins and outs, ups and downs of professions and industries. On today's edition of Career Talk, the Amber Utec Launchpad. I'm Jada Francis. Stay tuned. Under the Amber UTEC Launchpad Initiative, the University of Technology UTEC, in collaboration with the international technology company, the Amber Group, will provide 100 technology-driven startup operators the funding, tools, and guidance required to help them launch and expand their companies within a span of 1,000 days. The Launchpad, which was officially unveiled in March, is seeking to be a full-service incubator for digital startups operating in the local tech industry. President of UTEC Dr. Kevin Brown says the Amber UTEC Launchpad Initiative aligns with the mission of the institution to positively impact Jamaica, the Caribbean, and beyond through high-quality learning opportunities, as well as research and value-added solutions to government, industry, and community. The Amber UTEC Launchpad signals a significant and meaningful opportunity for Jamaican citizens of all ages and socioeconomic backgrounds, including tertiary students, to realize their dreams of establishing thriving businesses. So this program is going to offer an awesome opportunity like no other to ignite tech-focused business ideas that are relevant to Jamaica's development agenda and is well poised to add significant value by creating jobs and ultimately stimulating economic growth. He notes that the business incubator culture at UTEC began as far back as 2002 with a CAST Entrepreneurial Extension Center, now the UTEC's Technology Innovation Center, TIC. 
So the TIC is a specialized unit. It sits within the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership in our College of Business Management. And here at the TIC, we assist startups, we provide the training, and what we're trying to do is to make them succeed. And clients of the TIC have benefited from the reduced startup costs that we provide from the training. We have nurtured over 300 client businesses in our residential and virtual program. President UTEC Jamaica, Dr. Kevin Brown. According to Amber Group Chief Executive Officer CEO Ambassador Deshant Savadia, the vision is to create a thriving local technology ecosystem of innovators and change makers, driving positive change and prosperity for all. So I've gone through the startup journey. I know how difficult it is. I don't want others to suffer what I went through. How hard it was to raise a business in Jamaica. It is difficult. But then we also know that what makes success is innovations. The Global Innovation Index currently ranks Jamaica 78 out of 132. We are that far behind when it comes to innovations as a country. And that is why our motivation behind this was to underscore our commitment for nurturing entrepreneurship and driving economic development and this public private partnership with UTEC government and Amber together is what we really wanted to move to the next level the program he explained will among other things provide startups with full founder protection with capped equity full end-to-end -end development of their product as well as physical infrastructure to work on their own projects we provide a whole end-to-end -end development of their product. You will never have to go back for money to finish your product and roll it out into the market, ever. Second, full founder protection means you'll always remain the majority shareholder of this business. UTEC is going to provide the office infrastructure to all these startups. They will be receiving full support in terms of office space, electricity, internet, and proper training at the same time. In one year, our intention is that we take you from training to while we're parallel building your product and we launch you out into the whole world through our marketing channel. Amber Group Chief Executive Officer Ambassador Deshant Savaria. For further details on the initiative, persons may visit the websites of either utec at utec.edu.jm or the Amber Group at myambergroup.com slash amber launchpad. That's it for this week's program. Connect with us and send your questions or comments to at JRS News on X, formerly Twitter, at JRS Voice on Instagram, and interact with us on Facebook at Jamaica Information Service. On behalf of student engineer Joe Samuels, I'm Jada Francis, inviting you to join us again next time for another edition of Career Talk. A production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.